Hi, I'm Bridie Shepherd, and on the Eco Show today, I'm just out of Hobart on Luchuita country. I'm visiting one of the iconic Hydro Tasmania dams where I'll be learning about sustainable energy production. Let's check it out. Hydropower is the use of falling or fast running water to produce electricity, and it's been around in various forms for a long time. It has also been a cornerstone of Tasmania's energy production for over 100 years. Fast forward a century and the state of Tasmania is 100% powered by renewable energy, with most of that power coming from hydro systems. Hydropower is not only a vital source of energy for the state, but also the country as a whole, as power generated by Tasmania is fed back to the mainland. There are 30 hydro power stations around the state, operated by Hydro Tasmania. And today we're going to take a look at one of them. I'm at a hydro power station and I'm super, super excited to be here. I just think large scale infrastructure is the coolest thing ever. I'm about to meet Marty and he's gonna give me a tour. Hi Marty, thank you so much for having me here at Meadowbank on such a beautiful day. Pleasure to have you here, Bridie. Yeah, and welcome. Currently we're up on top of the dam here at Meadowbank. So Meadowbank itself, yeah, was, was built in 1967 as part of the Derwent scheme. That's the 10th power station on the Derwent and the, the lucky last in the scheme as well. So yeah, water into the power station then out and then the water heads out to sea from here. Mm. So yeah, an important power station in the scheme of things. Meadowbank sits at the end of the Derwent hydropower scheme, utilising a run of river technique meaning power stations have been set up along the river and water cascades through them following its natural flow. It's pretty cool to think the same water is being used to generate energy multiple times. Do you mind showing me how everything comes together? Absolutely. Come on, let's, let's have a bit of a look. When we talk about hydropower, really it's um, water power. So it's taking the, you know, the, the energy or the kinetic energy of, of water to be able to create electricity. So, we do that here and at all our power stations through through the state to add supply for the state, but then also for the mainland as well. And so Tassie's doing a lot with hydro, right? Like it's quite a, an essential component of uh, energy production here. It is. It's, it's uh, essential and it's in the DNA of the, of the state. Uh, like I say, it's, it's been part of the state for over 100 years and it has been the baseline for our electricity needs in and around the state over that time. Looking out across the lake here, it's kind of huge. I'm hoping Marty can put it into perspective for me. So we've got a lake here of around 185,000 cubic litres of water. So give or take around 12 Olympic swimming pools that we're looking at here. Um, and we, we take that energy in a lake perspective and then convert that from the lake down through what we call an intake gate through a, a short penstock here at Meadowbank, which is about 28, 29 metres long, into the power station itself to be able to electricity. So am I right in thinking that it's a, a big mass of water and then you're essentially channeling it through a smaller uh, turbine in order to produce the energy? Spot on Bright and you can hear that rush of water there now. So effectively what we're hearing is around 175 cubic metres of water per second going through the intake down into the power station. So if you think of a, a cubic metre of water, so that's a metre by metre cubed of water, yeah, 175,000 of those per second going through the power station. Mm. So there's a huge amount of water and this is also quite a, a small power station uh, compared to the other ones we've got. Yeah, that's right. This one adds around just under 2% to the overall for the state. Uh, but again, an important one in that run of the river, what we call in the Derwent. So yeah, 10 power stations in the Derwent section and that cascade effect of, of using the water once at the top end and then down to the next power station and down to the next one. And then the last one here at Meadowbank. Great, can we have a look at um, some of the water going in? Absolutely, let's do that. So you might have to just pop out over the side there, Bridie. You can actually see that screen there. So that's what we call our intake screen. So that's where the main volume of water comes in through the, the screens into the short penstock. So about 28 metres of head and then down into the power station. Now the efficiency of the power station and the generation is directly linked to the, the height of the lake. 
So we generally try and keep that as high as what we can, that head of water effect, which creates more pressure down through the, the power station and better efficiency for us to be able to generate. So we always like to keep it as brimming as we can without spilling. So you keep it as high as you can and then if it looks like it's going to overflow, you spill out some water, is that right? That's right. So we've got, uh, just behind us here, we've got two crest gates. Um, and they're set up in a way, if there is flood waters, they activate and actually release the water over the spillway, which basically creates a, a cascade effect of water going over the top. We can still generate through our power station, but it just releases those extra flood waters, which protects the scheme and protects the station as well. Mm, and does it protect the environment around as well? It does. Well, it allows that natural flow during those high water or flood events as well, mm. without holding it back. Great. We've seen it from above, but now it's time to get inside and see where the magic really happens. All right, where are we? We're inside the power station now, Bridie. Do you want to go have a look at the machine? Yeah, I'd love to. Right here. Righty -o, we're down on top of the, uh, the machine now. If we come over here, we'll poke our heads in here just to have a look at the, this is the top of the machine. So if you think we've just been up at the dam, water in to the bottom of the machine, yep. into the turbine, creating that spinning action, electricity out the top. So really we're seeing the, the top end of it here now. Wow! Just don't put your hands in there. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. It's so smooth. It is. So why is it spinning like this? Is that generating the power? That is, yeah. It's generating at the moment, Metabank Station. I think it's on full, full gate at the moment. So yeah, water in and then they're creating the electricity out the top. Fantastic. So it's generating the energy and then these are the cables that are actually taking the power up. That's right, yeah. So these cables up and out of the machine into the transformer, into the switchyard we call it, and then really yeah, converting that energy to send it down the trans lines. Incredible. We're really descending into the heart of the power station now. Get ready, it's going to get loud. Buddy, what is this? Well, we're in the heart of the machine now, so we're looking at the centre shaft of the machine. On the bottom of that is our runner. So if you think where we were up on the dam, get water in to the bottom of the station. Runner, water in, water out. And then that change of mechanical energy to electrical energy and then out the top of the machine. Oh, it's huge. It's so strong. It is. Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah, creating that, that force, like I say, that change of mechanical to electrical energy. Yeah. How does that actually work? How do you, how do you take the momentum in? Converting yep. it to energy that we can use. Yeah, so we've got a, a what we call a stator, which is in about the mid section of the, the machine itself. So that force of that spinning motion creates that mechanical energy from the shaft to spin. And the stator actually then converts it into that electrical energy and comes out through the top. So the bit we were looking at the top there, that's what we call our, our brush gear section. And that's that central piece for then that, that changeover from mechanical to electrical energy. What an amazing tour. I've loved seeing how all this works. With Tasmania operating at net zero, excess power produced from hydro is sent to the mainland. This is via an underwater cable called the Bass Link that sends about 500 megawatts of power. A new link that will quadruple this export has just been announced. It's called the Marinus Link. Jesse from Hydro Tasmania is going to tell me more. The great thing is that Tasmania is a, a renewable energy playground. We've got a lot more potential and we can contribute to the, to the decarbonising of the NEM. Further interconnection, and you might have heard the, the Marinus link, that opens up more interconnection between uh, mainland Australia and Tasmania, which just allows us to play a bigger part in that, um, in that journey and you know, supply further renewable energy across the market. Yeah, so you'll be balancing out um, the energy produced and the energy consumed at different times of year, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right. So here at Hydro, we've been producing renewable energy for over 100 years, and, but we've been a little bit constrained with, you know, the, the, I guess, the benefits that can provide to the wider community. So certainly done a great job and we feel we have a great legacy here in Tasmania, but this is the opportunity to have further interconnection. So sort of on the basic terms, 
Tasmania uses or has a peak demand in, in energy needs in the middle of winter, but then mainland Australia typically uses their maximum demand in the middle of summer, so cooling and air conditioning and so on. So we've already got some balance there that we can provide further interconnection. And what do you think the role of hydro is in sort of the, the gamut of renewable energy producers? At the moment, uh, the cost of technology and the way way things are going, we feel there's a time when there is, you know, no coal, very little gas and so on. But the key energy sources in the market will be wind and solar. So those those variable renewable energy sources. But the trouble is that you can't dispatch them. They're, they're harder to rely on and so on. So they need to be firmed and backed up with good supply. So we believe a combination of wind and solar firmed by hydro will be the most um, cost effective and reliable approach going forward so that you know certainly some batteries will play some part as well but hydro will play a big part of that deep storage that can last several days or or longer when there's a need what are some of the contemporary uh, hydro practices that are being implemented well certainly hydro tasmania we're australia's largest water manager and certainly in tasmanian terms we're a, a significant landowner so certainly from that aspect our environmental approach is really important to us both our social corporate responsibility and sort of that social license and uh, is really something we hold dear and as such we have you know a broad program aquatic program that really looks around our environmental impact water quality threatened species right down through to environmental flows and so on we've got downstream users lots of lakes across Tasmania you can imagine means lots of recreational users and so on as well as sort of farmers, irrigators and so on downstream. But I guess one of the key focuses is really around the, the environmental aspects and, and doing that. So as we've worked through and evolved the, the program, it's really understanding the water quality, our flows, our impacts downstream and ensuring we minimise those as much as possible, um, even through to our threatened species. And over, in the last 12 months, we've identified a, a, a small freshwater snail that hadn't been seen since the early 1900s and a short tail freshwater crayfish. As much as anything, it's about being contemporary and understanding and adjusting the, the practices, things like eDNA, where we can test water now instead of needing to take live samples to, to understand the, the species in the, our lakes. So, so. Yeah, so it's really incorporating sort of cultural factors, political factors, environmental, and making sure that you're sort of taking into account all the different stakeholders um, when making decisions. Yeah, absolutely. A big part of um, Hydro Tasmania being owned by the state of Tasmania Essentially, we're, we're owned by the community and it's making sure that we've got a sustainable product. We've been here for over 100 years and plan to be here for another 100 years. So certainly making sure that we, we leave, you know, while we're the custodians of it, we leave it in a better place than we find it. Land and water management is certainly a priority for the team at Hydro Tasmania. Cadet hydrographer Beck has a very unique job of measuring the inflows and outflows of water on the lake. How important is it that you get your measurements right? Are super important, especially when we're doing our flow measurements, so like the velocities coming out of the dams or the inflows coming into the dams. If you're not getting those right, obviously they're going to calculate water coming into the dam, into our storages that simply isn't there or it could be there and we're not letting as much water or generating enough power because we think it's not there. Um, so that's super important. <laughs> but also with our water level two, that's a very important one with our instrumentation that we look at all the time. Because if you've got a lake like Gordon that is very, very large and someone's read it, say 10 mil wrong, 10 millimetres of water off the top of Gordon is a lot of water. So it's really important that we have everything down to a third decimal place. Like it needs to be <laughs> bang on. So it's, yeah. And in your work, you also measure the water quality. So you're sort of working towards creating a more environmental sort of sustainable ecosystems. Is that right? Yeah, yep, that's exactly right. So we have a lot of water quality buoys in our lakes and we monitor those. So we work with the environmental on that one. We'll go out, check the sensors, grab the data, make sure they're all reading the right thing because it's really important, you know, when you've got fish, any kind of lobsters, rare, anything really, any marine life that, yeah, we're looking after it and maintaining it the best we can. So especially like algae and things like that, we just want to make sure that everything's good and we're really looking after what we've got. What's the water looking like at the moment? Yeah, the water is looking really great. We're pretty lucky in Tasmania. We don't really have an issue with anything sort of nasty in our water. I do this all the time when I'm on site and I've run out of water, which is quite often because it's very hot. You can just drink out of the lakes. Like they're very clean. We don't really have an issue. It's more just monitoring just to make sure that everything is okay and hydro do run 
as you can see at the moment. <laughs> their water, just for environmental reasons as well, just to keep the water all fresh. Why are you excited about working here? Growing up in Tasmania, you can't be a Tasmanian and not see a hydro asset. Like, they are everywhere. I used to spend a lot of time up the Central Highlands. We had a shack up there and I used to be obsessed with the pen stocks because they were so large and the water and the damn walls, as you've seen. And I just ended up enjoying that and throughout my degree. Like, I've learned the importance of climate change and all the stuff that's happening now, the shift to renewables, that's super important. And I really wanted to be a part of that. So that's basically why I'm here. Whilst filming the Eco Show in Hobart, our crew chose to stay at the Islington Hotel, slightly removed from the city with panoramic views of Mount Wellington. The private yet proximal Islington Hotel offers guests a privileged location, showcasing the best of what Tasmanian accommodation has to offer. The Islington Hotel presents a sensory experience with 11 unique rooms richly characterised by their eclectic style and exceptional features. This luxury adults-only Hobart hotel is for those seeking a gracious retreat amid an elegant setting. To book your stay at the Islington Hotel, visit islingtonhotel.com. Beck's enthusiasm for working in hydro has been shared by everyone we've met today, and I can see why. The electricity generated is so powerful, but looking out across the lake, it's also extremely bucolic. Speaking of the lake, I'm heading out there now with environmental scientist Andy. Andy and I are on Lake Meadowbank, and the power station is right behind us, and we're about to go collect some water samples. A raft has been set up on the lake, which sends water quality data back to the office every 15 minutes. But Andy and his team will also manually test the water once a month. So what's the importance of checking the water quality? Uh, it's really important because of, we've got so many uh, multiple users that use the water downstream and also on, on the lake. And if we have elevated uh, parameters such as turbidity, that can cause implications for those users. And it's really important that we have warning indicators on algal blooms or nutrient enrichment, because yeah. that'll have negative impacts on potentially fish populations downstream and also hope that water supply and other users. Mm. So you're really testing for quality for the natural environment, but also for people? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we have an environmental flow we need to maintain for the natural ecosystem in, the, in that water course downstream. Great, well let's, uh, let's get the samples. Let's do it. <laughs> Many animals live in the rivers and lakes, so not only is water quality important, but so is the natural flow of the river. In some cases, hydropower stations block the migratory path of species. For example, eels will spawn downstream and then swim upstream to live out their lives. While the Meadowbank power station stops the eels from doing this on their own, many humans are willing to give them a helping hand with the use of fish ladders. So you have a ladder, an eel ladder. Mm, What's yeah. that? Well, that's a ladder for the juvenile eels, the elvers, to climb up the ladder into a trap with a constant flow. That's then emptied daily and moved upstream into the catchment to help them on their way. So it's kind of a, a big ramp that they can sort of wiggle up. That's right. As long as there's, there's water flowing down the ladder, they will, they will spend all night getting up and into the trap because they're just trying to get upstream. So I'm having a peek in the ladder to see if any eels are currently swimming up there. They mainly swim at night, but um, we might be able to see some in the trap. Whoa! <gasps> eels? No, we've just got a lot of lamprey. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're lamprey. Uh, no, but this time of year it's, it's a bit late. <gasps> yeah. So the hormones are there for? Eels? Yeah, the, yeah, the elvers mainly. Yep. The juvenile eels, yeah. Don't eat them. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 They love this spot. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, I... So, I wasn't I would say, expecting them to look like this. So these are all adult land prey trying to get upstream to spawn. Giant, giant liters. 
Yeah. Oh. They're quite an alien looking Oh, wow. Species. You freaky little thing. <laughs> you slippery, strange so creature. They're, they're, they're so a, strong. Aren't they? They're a native species also. Oh, this is not an eel. This is a lamprey. Oh. Yeah, so these are, these are different. They're the opposite. These are anadromous trying to get upstream to spawn instead of upstream to live. Wow. Live their life out. You, wow. It's all muscle. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, they um, they suck. They're, they're they're parasitic, so they get on the side of fish yeah. and eat them from the outside. Yeah. <laughs> Andy was a little surprised to find lamprey rather than eels in the catchment this late in the season, but of course he's going to relocate them just the same. It might just take him a little bit longer. Because of their suction-like grip, they stick to the sides of the tank, so he'll have to pull most of them off by hand rather than have them swim through the tap opening. I'm pretty enamoured by the lamprey, but I'm going to leave this job to him. I've done so much today at Hydro Tasmania. I've learned how the station here works and how water is being harnessed into energy to sustainably power Australia. It's been great to hear how the environment is being considered in this process, particularly how we're caring for our slippery little friends. I'm Bridie Shepard. Thanks for watching the season of The Eco Show.